On this episode of the Trans Bay, we'll be talking about San Francisco. The San Francisco Municipal Transit Agency, or MUNI as it is branded, has had a rough year with massive cuts in service. And as of the release of this video, it is still uncertain when that will be resolved. The path leading here was a series of long-standing issues that all snowballed in 2020. Let's summarize how we got here. <laughs> So it's early 2020 and everybody is having fun, almost getting into a new endless war. But this fun is cut short when the new SARS-CoV-2 virus reaches the United States, bringing the COVID-19 pandemic. The number of infected would quickly go from worrying to oh sh**. On the 17th of March, a shelter-in-place order comes into effect in the Bay Area. Two days later, California Governor Gavin Newsom puts the entire state under a shelter-in-place order. The streets quickly empty. The emptying is especially profound in the Bay Area, where the abundant tech workers are easily able to continue working from home. Many were already doing so even before the statewide orders were announced. With the resulting lockdown, Mooney closes down the light rail system entirely on the 30th of March. A week later, Mooney announces major cuts to bus service. Overnight, Mooney's 68 bus lines became only 17, meant only for essential workers. Mooney's Director of Transportation, Jeffrey Tumblin, makes the announcement, please don't take Mooney if you have other options. By the summer, the number of bus lines had slightly increased from 17 to 23, but the future of Mooney was uncertain. Tumblin made the comment that up to 40 lines could be permanently cut if no funding was found. The pandemic was also not showing any signs of ending soon. Social distancing requirements greatly limited how many riders could fit in one bus, and more people were flocking to cars out of fear of getting infected on transit. Still, in late August, there was at least a moment of progress as the Mooney Metro light rail returned to service after being shut down for almost five months. Only for it to shut down again two days later. Let's take a tangent to explain what happened. There are two reasons the Metro was shut down again so quickly. The first problem was that one of the control center employees tested positive for COVID-19. Not only was the employee made to go home, but all other employees that came into contact with the infected had to undergo quarantine to prevent further spread. The second, more complex problem is that two overhead splices broke shortly after operation began. These splices are little parts that connect two lengths of wire in the overhead wiring system. The splices were custom made for Mooney by the Phoenix Mining and Transit Systems, a manufacturing supplier from Ohio. After the two splices broke, inspection by Mooney found that many other splices in the system were also at risk of breaking. If a train were to pass over these broken parts, it could tear down the overhead wire entirely, causing a lot more damage. Some splices were shown to have been made with material that didn't meet standard, Installation failure was also possible. There was also the sudden tension change from having no trains on the system for months to suddenly having all the trains on the system. The splices themselves were also rather dated. Different systems around the world had upgraded to more modern designs. Whatever single reason or combination of reasons, San Francisco once again found itself with no light rail. It would begin to return, but Slowly, most of the system remained replaced by buses. And so, with the chaos of the pandemic continuing, the year came to a close and 2021 rolled in. Still in the air was the question of a restoration. <laughs> Early in the year, new COVID-19 vaccines began distribution around the United States. Even though COVID variants were going through Greek letters faster than your physics teacher, a calming of the pandemic began to peak over the horizon. 
With it came the question of how to return to normalcy. Minnie's answer was unclear, to say in the least. Some lines had returned, bringing the active number up to 23, but the future of the rest of the system was still ambiguous. Muni's ridership was also dire, at less than 200,000 riders per day, compared to the pre-pandemic levels of 710,000 riders per day, a number which at the time was already declining. And despite this, operating costs were going up each year, mostly due to maintenance. Despite this, Mooney received more in federal aid than it had lost in fares and sales taxes during the pandemic, meaning its financial shape was better than it had been in 2019. As other transit systems began creating roadmaps for service restoration, residents began wondering when, if at all, they would be seeing their pre-pandemic lines return. Muni released a series of proposals for service restoration, named the Three Alternatives. The first was to bring back service as it was pre-pandemic. The second was to increase frequencies on select lines, but at the expense of cutting other lines. The third was to be a mix of both. The suggestion of cutting lines worried people. Some of the proposed frequencies were not even much, such as the 22 Fillmore, which would only increase frequency from every 6 minutes to every 5 minutes. That didn't come across as an improvement worth losing other lines over. Yet it seemed that Mooney was leaning towards choosing the second alternative. Some internal communication documents also noted that cutting the 21 Haze under one of the alternatives could be beneficial because it saves parklets. All of this combined, residents were not happy. So much so that the San Francisco Board of Supervisors held an administrative hearing for Mooney to answer for their inaction. In late July of 2021, San Francisco Supervisors Connie Chan and Dean Preston held a meeting with Moody Director Jeffrey Tumlin. They offered criticisms to what was being seen as an austerity mindset towards transit on the part of Moody, as well as the length of time it was taking for anything to happen. And I just want to say, you know, you've got cities like, I mean, San Diego, Sacramento has essentially, they've essentially restored 100% of their routes and schedules. You know, the, the VTA has restored about 80% uh, of its service hours, but, but they, you know, they, um, they have actually restored 100% of their routes, meaning that no one's left in the lurch, even if there were longer waits on those routes. LA has now released their plan to re restore 100% of pre-pandemic uh, service hours by September. Previous statements, my understanding was that based on the staffing concerns, uh, that it wouldn't be possible to, to do a full restoration until um, I think it was at, at the end of January 2022. Then in the written responses you provided, you said it would be summer of 2022. And now what I'm hearing is December of 2022. Tumblin defended Mooney's decisions, noting that the agency did not have the resources to bring back all service. The use of their emergency funding, though, was not left unquestioned. Is, is it true that MTA could bring back all lines to pre-pandemic service levels by the end of the year? So hiring is the primary limit on the pace of service restoration. Uh, we believe it is likely not possible given the pace of hiring. Again, other transit agencies that are overwhelmingly funded by sales tax. Sales taxes in most jurisdictions never collapsed during COVID. It did in San Francisco, but more importantly, all of the sources of revenue to Muni collapsed and are showing a very low recovery. The goal of the money that you receive is to help us restore, <laughs> you know, the level of service pre-pandemic and kind of get us through. And, and it just, it's just really hard to wrap our heads or wrap my head around uh, why aren't we there. The hearing also turned to discuss Jared Walker, a transit consultant who had been hired by Mooney for restoration plans. An old post from 2009 on Walker's blog, Human Transit, had been dug up. 
In the post, Walker analyzed Mooney's bus system, arguing that sometimes cuts are an improvement. His preference for fewer high-frequency lines was basically the same as Mooney's high-frequency alternative, but this view had been heavily criticized for being dismissive of disabled people and the communities the route service. Have you read, have you read Mr. Walker's blog post on MTA's site, the guest post? Uh, I have read that. And again, Jared Did Walker you... is not doing our transit service planning. But Jared you hired him. And is informing. But you hired him as a sole source uh, contract and, and he's coming in and he is presenting quite clearly his view that that is a better use of funds to invest in the core services than he picks on particularly the two Clement. He doesn't talk about, and, and, and with deference to uh, Supervisor Chan, since it's your district, I, I, I probably shouldn't opine as much, but let me just say that these things didn't, did, to Clement, didn't just emerge out of nowhere. It's an integral part of a neighborhood commercial district that has developed around it. It disproportionately serves Chinese seniors who without it will be forced to cross a high injury corridor on Geary. And so to Mr. Walker on a map, Ah, it's just a block or two, whatever away. And and he's putting that in a blog featured on MTA's website at the start of a process where the question will be, should we abandon the two Clement in favor of greater investments on the 38, for example? So what became of all this? Well, not much. Plans would still be discussed, and new COVID variants would keep making restoration harder. So, what now? The way things are going, it doesn't look like Mooney will be seeing the amount of service it had in 2019 for some time. They were in a very difficult situation. But when you zoom out to the rest of the Bay Area, San Francisco begins to look more alone in this. BART, for an example, was nearing 100% service restoration, and they applied a 50% discount on all fares in September to incentivize ridership. Caltrain, which almost shut down permanently in the summer of 2020, not only implemented the 50% fare discount in September, but actually started running more trains than it has ever. How was it that the Bay Area's densest and most important city had fallen so behind in transit restoration? Well, these problems didn't come from nothing. Years of San Francisco not living up to its transit first policy, even minimal changes taking forever and being tied up in compromise. The lack of proper funding is, as always, behind the struggles of all American transit systems. It's caused a slow but steady snowballing. The pandemic just greatly increased the speed. In the months after the hearing, it does seem like Mooney has pulled back on the Walker-style line-cutting plans. But restoration to 2019 service is still far away. The Omicron COVID variant also sends a lot of drivers home sick, leaving bus lines to sporadically lose service. It's fair to say the road ahead for Mooney will continue to be a rough one. But hey, at least the cable cars were free for a month. So we saved the cable cars in 1980.